You're listening to Brains On, where we're serious about being curious. Brains On is supported in part by a grant from the National Science Foundation. Hey, Sandin, do you have the tibia? Uh, no. Uh, sorry, Manika, I'm working on hanging the scapula right now. Mark, do you have it? Oh, yeah, yeah, I have it. I was going to start hanging it just after I get through these distal phalanges. Oh, cool. I'll start on the patella. Hey, Mark, Manika, and Sandin. These skeletal decorations are looking amazing. That paper mache skull is incredible. (laughs) Thanks. It took forever. Oh, and I love the crocheted vertebrae. Super crafty. Thanks. Crochet all day, I say. Oh, wow. And that origami trapezoid bone is adorable. You all have really outdone yourselves with these Halloween decorations. Halloween? Oh, these aren't for Halloween. Oh, yeah, we just wanted to pay tribute to our favorite bones with this fabulous hallway display. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, if you want to see our Halloween decorations, those are just around the corner. Yeah, just look for that giant plate of bagels with no cream cheese. It's truly terrifying. This is Brains On from American Public Media. I'm Molly Bloom, and my co-host today is Charlotte from St. Paul. Hi, Charlotte. Hello. Today, we're going to be answering listener questions about bones. So, Charlotte, would you say that you think about your bones regularly? Well, I mean, I definitely think about them when I break them. Have you broken a bone before? Yes, um, twice actually. Which bone did you break? My wrist and the bone protecting it and my, the like bone right above my elbow bone. And what were you doing when you broke your bones? The first time I was three and I was swinging and I fell off. And what about your wrist? What happened there? Um, I was swinging on the bunky bars doing like, I was in kindergarten and I fell and... Yeah. And did you have to wear a cast after? Um, yeah, both times I had to wear a cast. Actually, this it was not comfortable. Like, you could not move your arm. Was it itchy? Yes. Very itchy. Did people, did you decorate it or did people decorate it? Lots of people signed the cast both times. And um, a bunch of them were kindergartners from, <laughs> from my class. And actually, that's the year that I got, like, all my school friends and... So it was a good way to meet people. Everyone got to sign your cast. Yeah. Bones are crucial to us being able to do many, many things. We don't really see them, so it's easy to take them for granted. So let's start with the bare bone basics and answer these listener questions. Hi, my name's Oliver from West Hills, California. And my question is, what are bones made of? I'm Katie. I'm from Concord, North Carolina. And my question is, what makes bones hard? Hi, my name's Corbin. I'm from Apple, Idaho. And my question is, what's in your bones? First, let's think of what bones do. They support your body, giving you a shape and strength. They protect parts of your body, like your skull protects your brain, and your ribs protect your lungs. And they're designed to move. Where two bones come together is called a joint. That's like your elbow or your knee. Almost any part of your body you can move, there's a joint there. So bones have to be super strong, but also light and flexible. They're made mostly of collagen, which is a strong and flexible protein, and calcium phosphate, which is a strong mineral that gives bones more strength and hardness. Let's look at bones from the outside in. Bone layer one. The outer layer of a bone is called compact bone. If you looked at this layer under a microscope, it would look like a bunch of thick tubes packed closely together. Each tube has a small opening in the middle where blood vessels and nerves go through. Bone layer two. The next layer is called spongy bone. And even though this layer may look like a sponge under a microscope, it's not squishy like one. The bigger openings in this layer are called pores, and they give room for nerves and blood vessels and marrow. Bone layer three. The innermost layer of your bone is called marrow. This layer is soft, but it's hard at work all the time. Your marrow makes some super important stuff. Blood. But actually, not in the spooky way, more like the super important for your survival way. So like blood. Your bone marrow makes all of your red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. 
That's the stuff that keeps you alive by delivering oxygen around your body. Fighting off germs. And helping you stop bleeding if you get a cut. These are very important cells. And they're made right there in your bone marrow. Thanks, Bones. Brains <coughs> Next, let's answer this important question. My name is Alessandra from Tuscaloosa. My question is, how do bones grow? That's a great question. Let's start by explaining what our bones are like when we're young, before they are fully bones. Wait, our bones aren't always bones? Not exactly. When we're babies, some of our bones are actually made of this stuff called cartilage. It's a flexible and rubber-like material. You can feel what cartilage is like if you touch your ear or the tip of your nose. So, Charlotte, try touching the tip of your nose. What does it feel like? Rubber. Yeah, it's kind of squishy and rubbery. When we're born, some of our bones are all cartilage and some are partially cartilage. And get this, babies have around 300 bones, but grown-ups only have around 200. That's freaky. So where do our bones go? Do they just magically disappear? Do they fall out like our teeth? Do they pack up and move out to find a new body? Thankfully, no. What happens is something called ossification. It's how your baby bones go from soft and rubbery to strong and hard. And it's also how some bones fuse together so two bones can become one. Ossification is kind of a big deal. Hold up, am I saying this right? Ossification. Almost like awesome vacation. Yes, like awesome vacation. That is right. Growing bones are having the vacation of their lifetime. The os part comes from the root osteo, which means bone, and vacation means to make or create. Together it becomes the creation of bones. I just love doing that. Let me introduce you to my friend, Baby Femur. Baby Femur is going to ossify or transform from cartilage to hard bone pretty soon. Baby Femur, are you here? Um, hi. Ah, so adorable. Can I pet you? So, go ahead. I'm not tough like a bone yet, so be careful not to pet too hard. Whoa, so rubbery. Yeah, weird, right? The femur is your thigh bone. Baby femur will start ossifying pretty soon, and it will continue for 16 to 19 years until baby femur becomes a fully hardened bone. That's a long, awesome vacation. During ossification, minerals fill in areas around the cartilage cells of a bone. When those cartilage cells die, minerals also fill in the spaces they leave behind. Cells that collect calcium begin to make the bone strong and hard. That's why people always talk about getting enough calcium for strong bones. While that's happening, other cells come and fill our young bones with that marrow stuff we talked about earlier. So long, cartilage cells. Next up, strong bones. That's only part of growing. Our bones also need to get longer and bigger. To explain how that happens, we talked to Maisha Alexander, a biological anthropology grad student in New York City. She started the Rockstar Anthromobile Bone Lab to bring hands-on learning experiences to urban schools. She said, with a bone like the femur, growth happens in more than one place. That thigh bone or that femur bone is actually several different pieces. And the several different pieces are connected by that cartilage that we talked about. And as we grow those spaces begin to fill in with do that ossification process that we talked about that is essentially us growing more and more bone. And eventually those bones harden, we grow taller, our bones become stronger. Those spaces of cartilage that Maisha mentioned are called growth plates. Most growth plates are near the ends of your long bones, like the femur, for example. New cartilage is made there and adds to the bone, making it longer. It happens very slowly over years and years, which is why we grow slowly. Once those plates are completely hardened, that bone has finished growing. So let's fast forward about 16 to 19 years and see how baby femur is doing. Time flies. I feel so old now. I have to do my own laundry and maybe even get started on this year's taxes. Now I'm the strongest, best version of me. This process happens with bones throughout our body. All told, this will take years. Human bones typically grow until we're in our mid-20s. 
So those are the bone growing basics. Did you know some of the smallest bones in your body are actually in your ear? Yeah, they're called auditory ossicles. They help you pick up sounds and they better be ready because here comes the... Here it is. Let's hear it one more time. Okay, Charlotte, what is your guess? It kind of sounds like, um, like a car kind of some, or like one of those like toy lawnmowers where, where like you pull the thing and like bubbles come out and it makes the sound like that. Yes, that is a very, very good guess. We're going to hear it again and give you another chance to guess later in the show. Molly, did you hear that? Yeah, that's odd. What is that? And now, a word from the scariest skeleton in town, Mr. Bone Jangles. Ooh, bonjour, brains on. Tis I, Mr. Bone Jangles, a bonafide skeleton, here to drop some hair-raising skeleton facts. I don't have any hair, but if I did, they would be standing straight up at the very thought of this parade of petrifying truths. How unexpected. Welcome to the show, Mr. Jangles. Oh, all Shantae. Oh, I hope I'm not interrupting anything. I would... Actually, we're kind of in the middle of the show, but... Oh, so I'm just in time. Perfect. The last thing I'd want to do is get under your skin. <laughs> wow, I've never met a skeleton in the flesh. Or bone, actually. How fun! Fun, my dear Charlotte, fun? I can guarantee these are not fun facts. These facts are spooky. Did you know that most of the species on Earth are invertebrates? Meaning they have no backbone? Bone chilling, am I right? Uh, actually, didn't find that scary, like, at all. Uh, oh, well, I, I find spineless jellyfish quite spine-chilling, but I guess that's me. <laughs> Let's see, well, how about this? Humans and giraffes have the same number of bones in their neck. That's seven bones. <laughs> because, it, you know, that their necks are so much longer than ours, but the number of bones still the... Same. The horror! I'm with Charlotte. These facts are fascinating, but not frightening. Still not spooked, huh? Well, I saved the creepiest for last. <laughs> Over half of a human's bones are found either in their feet or their hands. That's 26 bones in each foot and 52 in each hand. <laughs> Still nothing. No, not really. But look, I appreciate you stopping by, we, but we really should be getting back to the show. I completely understand. I'll return after my lunch break. It wasn't exactly an open invitation, but... You don't have to tell me twice, Molly. Just riddle me this. Where could a numbskull get some spare ribs around here? The brain song cafeteria is down the hall. Say less. I'm going to get my bone BQ on. Tibia continued... Bon appetit! Hi there, Molly here. I'm coming to you with some very exciting news. Starting now, we're offering a new way to engage with Brains On and get some fun extra perks. It's called Smarty Pass, and it's your ticket to ad free episodes of Brains On Forever Ago, Smash Boom Best, and Moment of Um, plus a bonus episode of one of our shows every month. And you get to listen to it all in your favorite podcast listening app, including Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Pretty cool, right? If you don't subscribe to Smarty Pass, your original free feeds will still be going just as they are now. 
But if you do choose to subscribe, you'll get an ad-free feed for each of our shows and some awesome bonus episodes on top of it. Whether you choose to subscribe or keep listening in our free feeds, we really, really, really appreciate you listening to our shows and being a part of the Brains On universe. Thank you so much for your support. If you're interested in subscribing, again, it's smartypass.org slash brains on. Brains, brains, brains on. You're listening to Brains On from American Public Media. I'm Charlotte. And I'm Molly. And it's time to answer this question. Hello, my name is Andrew, and I'm from Toronto. And my question is, what happens inside your leg? Well, it is healing when you have a broken leg. Producer Manika Wilhelms joining us to talk about how bones heal. She's been reading up on it since she broke her wrist two weeks ago. Hi, Manika. What happened? Well, I fell and it put more force on my wrist than it could really handle with no cushioning. So one of my bones in there, my scaphoid bone, it cracked like a dropped plate. But how did you fall? Oh, right. Yeah, I was scootering like I usually do, but I was also wearing my yoga toga and that led to a tumble. Bummer. Yeah. I think I'll be keeping my long flowing robes separate from my wheeled accessories from now on. Probably wise. Thanks, Charlotte. Well, healing broken bones is a mega talent, especially since bones are such complicated special structures. The first thing on your body's to-do list if you fall and break a bone is damage control. Bones have blood vessels running through them, so those break if your bone breaks too. Hi, I'm here at the southwest corner of the wrist. We've got some broken blood vessels here. We're gonna need a blood clot to stop that flow. Your immune system also helps out. You might notice swelling at a broken bone, and that's partly because the immune system is sending white blood cells to the clot. They help clean up dead bone cells and also get rid of any germs that might have come in through a scrape. Great work, white blood cells. Love what you've done here. Once the initial damage is taken care of, your body needs to hold the broken bones in place in order to mend them. And this is where cartilage comes in. Remember, cartilage is that rubbery material in your nose and ears that we talked about earlier? It's also part of healing. Bring that cartilage a little to the right, back just a smidge, and perfect. Right across that crack in the bone, nice and easy, perfect. So you often get a plaster cast on the outside of a broken arm or leg, but you also have almost like a little cartilage cast inside your body, around the bone itself. How neat is that? That holds the bone in place and also starts healing the break inside and out. Okay, people, look alive. We're doing more than just holding things together. Blood vessels start to heal inside this cartilage structure, and then eventually, some of the cells in this cartilage start converting themselves into bone. They bring in calcium, which hardens bone. Cartilage. You, 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 and you. Go ahead and start hardening into bone. Meanwhile, other cells also make new bone. You can think of that a little bit like a bunch of bone cells repaving a road. Lots of different cells are in this road crew, and two important ones are osteoblast cells and osteoclast cells. They're both bone cells, but they do different jobs. I'm a kind of cell called an osteoblast. I lay down bone cells and pull minerals in to make them harden. When your body heals a bone at first, the area right around the break will actually be a little bit bigger of a bump than the rest of the bone. So there's also a kind of cell that breaks things down so that the repaved road is the right shape. Then I'm an osteoclast. My job is breaking down bone where it isn't needed. In your body, osteoclasts use acid to get rid of little bits of bone. Not tiny jackhammers, as cool as that would be. Over time, osteoclasts and osteoblasts will end up creating a repaired bone that's normal shaped and good as new. Cool, thanks, Manika. Anytime, now I gotta run. That long flowing robe collection of mine is not gonna organize itself. Bye. And now, once again, Mr. Bone Jangles. I'm back! Welcome back, Mr. Jangles. Did you bring some fearsome facts this time? Thanks, Molly. The pleasure is all spine or mine. And yes, I'm much more prepared. In fact, dim the lights. 
Birds have hollow bones that are filled with air sacs. These extensions of the bird's lungs allow them to take in oxygen while they inhale and exhale. You know you had me with the music for a second, but that's not really scary. Cool, not scary. Hush, hush, sweet Charlotte, I'm just getting started. Did you know that gummy bears contain bones? Gummies typically use gelatin, which is made by extracting collagen from boiled animal bones. It gives them that soft, jelly-like texture. Hmm, I'd rate that maybe a tiny bit gross, but zero bit spooky. Tough crowd, huh? I, I, I do have one more fact. Uh, bone us, if you please. Music! Would you believe there are places around the world that are made up of bones? One of the most popular is called the Catacombs of Paris in, you guessed it, Paris, France. At the end of the 18th century, the city cemeteries were overflowing. The solution? They decided to move the remains to tunnels running underneath the city. Over six million skeletons are buried in the catacombs with stacks of skulls lining the walls. It's the perfect place to take a scalfy! <laughs> <laughs> Too much? Whoa, Mr. Jangles, that was legit creepy. Oh, I did warn you. Wow, thanks, Mr. Jangles. Yeah, Mr. Jangles, you're bad to the bone. How you flatter me. Thank you and farewell, brains on. Bone voyage. Brains <laughs> Okay, Charlotte, are you ready to go back to the mystery sound again? Yes. Okay, here it is. Last time you were hearing toy car, toy lawnmower. Do you have any new thoughts? Okay, I forget the name of this, but, um, screwdriver? Like a motorized one? Like a motor? Yes. Excellent. Excellent guess. Let's hear the answer. Hi, my name is Jaden, and I'm from Western Nebraska. That sound was me screwing a screw in and out with a drill. Charlotte, you are 100% correct. Yeah, so that motorized screwdriver is called a drill. So really, really good ears. Woohoo! <laughs> yes. Yeah, that was a really, really good guess. So, you know... We are playing this for a reason in this episode because sometimes when you break a bone, doctors will use screws or nails or plates to hold your bone together in place while it's healing. So did you have any uh, screws or pins or anything put in when your bones were healing? Um, I had three pins. I still have the mark, actually. Oh, really? That's really cool. Yeah, sometimes doctors take them out after the bone is done healing, but sometimes people have screws or plates in their legs or arms forever. So far, we've learned how bones are super strong and super resilient. And now our pal, Ruby Guthrie, is here to tell us why bones last so long. Hi, Charlotte. Hey, Molly. Thanks for having me. I was at the museum the other day, and I noticed it was filled with bones. Dinosaur bones, bird bones, whale bones, even human bones. And it made me think... How can bones last so long? To find out, I asked the dinosaur bones. And they didn't answer because they're dead. So then I asked Professor Sean Tallman, who isn't dead. Uh, hello, uh, my name is Sean Tallman, and I am an assistant professor in anatomy and neurobiology at Boston University. Sean is a biological anthropologist, which means he studies old skeletons to learn more about our past. I think bones are, are really fun to work with. So, you know, putting together uh, bones, whether it be from an animal or a human, is really satisfying because it is like a big puzzle. Sean says one of the reasons bones last so long is thanks to their super strong calcium phosphate structure. And so it's really resistant to a lot of like the natural effects of being outside maybe, or being in the water or underground and exposed to dirt or maybe animals um, picking at it or moving around. But they're not invincible. Over time, 
bones, like anything else, start to degrade and decompose. Bones are best preserved when they become fossils. Fossils aren't actually bones, but rather an imprint of a bone. Fossilization happens when remains, like bones, are quickly covered by sediment. The sediment could be anything from piping hot lava to sand from the bottom of the ocean. As time passes, moisture and minerals from the sediment start to slowly replace the bone itself. What you're left with is a rock-solid copy of the original bone. And we can learn so much from old bones. They help us construct what the past looked like, who and what was there, and how we evolved into the species we are today. Thanks for sharing, Ruby. Anytime. Say, has anyone seen Mr. Bone Jangles? I have a bone to pick with that dude. He totally copped the last of the spare ribs. Oh, dear. Bones are mostly made of collagen and calcium phosphate, but they also have nerves and blood vessels running through them. The inside of bones is called marrow, and that's where the super important cells in your blood are made. Babies have more bones than adults, and a lot of them aren't really bones just yet. As you grow, your bones harden and fuse together in a process called ossification. Bones are super strong, but if they get hit in the right way or are under a lot of pressure, they can break. Luckily, bones are great at healing, thanks to some cool cells called osteoblasts and osteoclasts. A bone's lifespan completely depends on its environment. While most bones eventually decompose, others can last up to thousands of years thanks to fossilization. That's it for this episode of Brains On. Brains On is produced by Molly Boom, Mark Sanchez, Sandin Totten, and Manika Wilhelm. We had production help from Phyllis Fletcher, Ruby Guthrie, Ava Kean, and Christina Lopez. We had engineering help from Johnny Vince Evans. Special thanks to Drew Stevenson, Elise Morgan, Mickey Bloom, Stuart Bloom, Jacob Maldonado Medina, Shiny Vargas, and Lulu. Brains On is a non-profit public radio podcast. You can support the show and help us keep making new episodes at brainson.org slash contact. And now before we go, it's our moment of... Why does time fly when you're having fun? That's such a great question, and it's something that I experience all the time. Hi, so my name's Ruth Ogden. I'm a lecturer in psychology, and I am interested in how people experience the passage of time in their daily lives. So I would say that time flies when you're having fun for a couple of different reasons. So one is that when we're having fun, we tend to get very excited. So we experience different emotions. We might breathe a little bit more quickly. We might sweat a little bit more. And one of the things that we know about time is that how we experience it in the brain, so how our brain processes time, is influenced by emotion. So for all our other senses, for touch and taste and smell and hearing and vision, we've got an organ, haven't we? So you know you have your eyes, you know you have your ears. And for time, we don't really seem to have that. We know there are specific bits of our brain that are involved in perceiving time. So you can kind of think about it like a stopwatch. You've got a little stopwatch in your brain, it's ticking away normally, and then you get excited, and this stopwatch starts going quicker and quicker and quicker and quicker, and you feel like time is passing by more quickly. When you're really sad or when you're very bored, you probably get the opposite effect and it starts going more slowly. Another reason might be that when you're really happy, you just don't think about time. Like you're enjoying the things that you're doing, you don't really think about time, and then you're just surprised that so much time has passed. Um, um, um. Hi, everybody. I'm Molly Bloom. And I'm Joy Dolo. And we're We're going going on on a Brains on Universe field trip. And we're so excited to have you all with us. Yeah, we're going to learn about some sandwiches shaped by history, find out how a famous fake fruit flavor came to be, and hear a debate about two of our favorite condiments. And you heard us talking about Freezy, so you brought us some. Guess you could have them. Oh, thank you, Sandin. Wait, wait, why? What is Sandin up to now? To find out, come along on our snacktacular road trip. 
We'll play games, solve puzzles, and answer questions live. And remember, Smarty Pass members get a 20% discount. Go to brainzon.org slash field trips. These will only be available live at these specific times, and there's limited seating, so sign up soon. Can't wait to see you all. be back with more answers to your questions. Thanks for listening.